Welcome to Introductory Remote Sensing, ENV202 or 502 for postgraduate students. My name is Karen Joyce and I'm the unit coordinator for this class. So the class is actually a journey of your learning experience. And so in saying this, there's two things that you need to know about the way I'll be teaching the class that may be a little bit different to what you've come across before. The first is that I have a requirement for you to complete some pre-class theory before you actually come into the classroom every Monday. So what this means is there'll be a couple of very small activities for you to conduct and it will give you a little bit of theoretical knowledge about what we're going to discuss that week in class. The reason I do this is so that you're prepared and when you get to class we can actually do some fun stuff and really get into the details rather than just looking at some basic rote learning theory type stuff. The second thing is that you actually have the opportunity to drive the topics that we're going to discuss each week. So obviously I have a 12 week plan and topics that I'm going to get through each week but I'm going to set aside a period of time each week to discuss a topic of your choice. So you can suggest these topics and as a class vote on the topic that we will select for discussion the following week. So I urge you to be active in, in your learning and participate in the options that you're given in terms of driving the direction that we studied. In week one, we're going to really just start to look at some definitions of remote sensing and how it's actually used for environmental monitoring. We're really going to get a grip on what the benefits of using remote sensing are as opposed to conducting field survey, for example. In this week, we'll also have a bit of administration to go through and it's, it's all about just getting to know your peers and becoming familiar with unit materials and the assessment items. In week two, we start to get a little bit more into the detail of remote sensing and this really deals with how light interacts with the environment. So we'll be talking about terms like energy, frequency, wavelength and reflection, absorption and transmission as means of light or energy to pass through the environment. So as a whole, we'll consider the electromagnetic spectrum, different regions of that and what we actually use for environmental observation. Week three will take us to look at how this light or energy actually can give us information about environmental features. So we'll introduce the concept of spectral signatures, which really gets us information about how light is reflected and absorbed by different features. And this will give us a bit of an indication about what we can tell about different biophysical characteristics of the environment in which we're interested. So we'll talk about measuring light in the field, but also how satellites or air airborne systems do it as well. In week four, we'll start to look a little bit more at remote sensing imagery, particularly from space-based platforms. We'll discuss the terms of spatial, spectral, temporal and radiometric dimensions, so you'll understand what those concepts are and what the effects of changing those are. And the reality is that we, we can change any of these dimensions, but it will always have an impact on the other. So there'll be a trade-off in what we can choose to select when we're looking at acquiring imagery. Week five, we really get into looking at interpretation of imagery. So we'll build on to the image interpretation cues that you may have heard about previously. So how our eyes are actually interpret imagery, so not just based on colour, but looking at features like texture, size, shape, association. We'll also look at colour mixing theory, image visualisation, and how satellites actually separate the different areas of the electromagnetic spectrum into separate bands, and what this means for our image interpretation as well, and how we can link this to being able to interpret biophysical properties of our features of interest. Week six is all about learning how remote sensing data are actually acquired from both airborne and satellite platforms. So we look at the characteristics that affects data acquisition. We'll also look at unmanned airborne systems and during week six we'll conduct a field trip to Litchfield National Park. 
In week seven, we'll take the field data that we acquired the previous week from Litchfield and start looking at how we can actually link this information to image data. So we'll discuss a number of different problems that that brings up and how we can potentially overcome them as well. So collecting field data is all about calibrating and validating remotely sensed data. So we'll build up on these terms and really start to understand what this means. In week eight, we'll start to look at the image processing sequence. So this will allow us to understand how we can actually create maps from imagery. So really getting information out of something rather than it just looking like a pretty picture. So we look at how we actually can link information needs, so what our client requires, with what data is needed to answer the questions. We start to look at some pre-processing operations with respect to what the information need is, how we can enhance the data so that it's easier to interpret and we can get some more information out of it. And we'll look at a couple of different mapping techniques as well. From there, we'll take the maps that we create in week eight and in week nine, we'll start to look at how we measure its accuracy. So accuracy is really important to understand and to be able to report to your client so they know where potential errors are. So it's not just the overall accuracy of the map, but it's the accuracy of different features within the map as well. So we'll talk about different statistics reporting measures and being able to interpret those as well. From then, in week 10, we'll start to look at measures of environmental change and how remote sensing can be used to map and monitor that. So we'll look at a number of different analysis techniques and the types of change that we are able to look at. Week 11 is really all about being able to communicate all the information that we've gathered throughout the semester. So we look at a number of different information types and then presentation styles as well. So whether that be reporting it in, in a peer reviewed journal, in a newspaper article, through social media, on the TV, whatever you like, we'll look at different techniques to be able to do that, to be able to make sure that you get your message across in a scientific manner, but also in a way which will communicate your meaning to the appropriate audience. And we finish in week 12 looking at the future of remote sensing. So we'll go through a view of where Australia is placed in terms of future, future space, space missions and what's happening at the moment. We'll also look at some techniques that, that are up and coming using different technologies to be able to acquire and process remotely sensed data.